Hello, everybody. I'm Rookie Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. Here at Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses that need to be highlighted. And don't forget, while you're here, make sure to subscribe, like, and share our content. It really means a lot to us. So it is the new year, and we are all looking forward to doing better this year than we did last year. But that doesn't mean the process still doesn't happen. I want to introduce you all to somebody who knows all about that process. Everybody say hello to my friend, Trey Clayton the third. Woo! Uh, how you doing? How you doing, Ricky? So good, good to be on Trey. here and, and be, be with their, your viewers today. Uh, thank you so much for being here. It means so much. By the way, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Thank you, sir. So, Trey, let, we're going to just really get started because you have a very interesting tale of becoming the person you are right now. So why don't we go back a little bit and let's talk about your football career. I'm going to try to be quiet because you know I'm not a fan. Go ahead, sir. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, well, you know, I'll, I'll make it brief. Um, it, it was... I was blessed really by God um, at a very young age to know that I was athletic. Um, I come from, you know, uh, I'm the youngest boy out of all of us. There's seven, well, actually there's seven total, but five, you know, siblings. So I was the youngest boy. I have a, a, a little sister, but, you know, um, watching my brothers, cousins, everybody grow, grow up, um, I was able to kind of hang with the big boys and learn real quick, um, you know, about skills, football, my brother, um, you know, he, he passed uh, and I'll kind of get through further than that, but he was very, very influential to me, you know, being, uh, having discipline and doing those things in my career. So at a young age, I was able to be on a lot of good little championship teams and, you know, skip fa fast forward from Pop Warner to high school. Um, yeah, I was able to, uh, play at El Camino High School in Oceanside. A uh, reason why I bring that up because at the time um, there wasn't a lot of black quarterbacks, and uh -huh. um, you know in the 1990s, uh, you know, or me growing up even in the 80s, right? So we had like Doug Williams, Warren Moon, but one of my favorites was Randall Cunningham. Yeah. So I kind of patterned my game around him, and my brother was a quarterback, right? So mm -hmm. uh, quarterbacks are leaders and captains and thing, and they always have the ball in their hand. So that's what sure. I definitely wanted. And, um, and they always show up on TV first. <laughs> Correct. They're the star. That's <laughs> They're right. The star. And so, uh, but I was able to play very early in my career. Um, and with that came recruiting. And as I played uh, varsity when I was a sophomore and mm -hmm. able to grow, um, and we had a really, really great team. We won like four in a row, as you can see that that one there, right there. Yes, I see. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm ready for you to get to the college part so I can, you know, suck my teeth and roll my eyes. Um, but I'm getting to it right now, right? So uh, I was able to do that. And and because I was uh, got the All-American kind of status, I was able to choose where I want to go. So I went to Nebraska first, won a national championship there. But the school that we're going to talk about here is Pitt. And so going to uh. Pitt. Uh, <laughs> you know, while like, you're doing all of this, you know, going through these different things, you know, you're Pop Warner, you're going through your high school, you're playing varsity as, as a sophomore, you're being recruited heavily because of your skill. At that time, what was your mindset like? Because I know you said, you know, you wanted to be the quarterback because they were the leader and they were in the news first or whatever. But what were you thinking about, you know, going into those kinds of things? Um, as far as in uh, just high school or going to college? Sure, going to college from high school. Um, My number one thing really was to, it, it, it's not like it is today where every college team was on TV. It's only the main People like, you know, I mentioned your school, Alabama, Go ahead. Roll right? Tide, roll. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Nebraska, Michigan, Ohio State, Miami. There's very few that got that those TV rights, not like how it was today. So I definitely wanted to be able to. That was my factor of trying to be exposed mm -hmm. and play at the highest level because I had won a lot of championships in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to kind of continue that. I mean, really, number one is not just about me. I, I'm a team player. And okay. so I really want to accomplish team goal oriented mm -hmm. championships things like that yeah. and so you know but I did move going from 
high school to college, I changed my position because I went from there as an athlete because there wasn't really the prototypical black quarterback. It was really like yeah. you really had to sit in the pocket. You weren't able to run around. Offense yeah. weren't like they were today. Yeah. Um, so uh, unfortunately, well, not for unfortunately, but I wish I would have stayed there, but that was my mindset. And my mindset mm -hmm. was to go to the best place where I can compete with the best yeah. players. So okay. that was said going there. Now, did you have plans of of leaving college and going to the NFL as well as most players my do? Number one goal when I was a little kid. That's really all I wanted to do. Mm. Um, I worked really hard. Like you know, I think a lot of it is, hey, you know, you're blessed with talent, but to be the best, you have to really work hard. Wow. Um, and that's like training your body. I mean, I think for two weeks out of each year, it's the only time I rested my body, and then it was like off season work and grinding and doing things like that to eat better your skills yeah continue to get you know work on your strengths and weaknesses right mm -hmm. Gotta do both. <laughs> and to balance yourself out but you know it's really all about getting bigger faster and stronger every year right that's crazy and so you were at Pitt until you graduated correct yeah actually I left well I didn't graduate then mm -hmm. I have graduated right. but I know <laughs> um yeah, right. And uh, so I did. I left with the intentions of trying to come home and train to go to the draft. OK, that so, yeah. So talk finished. to me about that transition. So you 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 leave early and you're like, yep, I'm going to get ready for the draft or the combine or whatever. How did that go from there? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're I like, did not wait, what? <laughs> no, you didn't. Um, For me, it was. And the reason why is because. Um, I put all my eggs into that one basket. And sometimes if it doesn't happen the way that you really want, you're going to get disappointed. Even if, even if you hear these guys think that they're going to go first round and they go fifth or sixth or seven, they are disappointed. Sure. Um, you're disappointed if you don't get drafted, you still get on the team. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pressure, especially at 2021, because we've been probably all working for this since we were seven years old. Like you said, Pop Warner in high school. Mm -hmm. And we've had these dreams. And that was my dream because I thought I was going to get there and then I could move on with life. Plus, I put so much work into it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said like doing the preparation and work and the experience and like, you know, signing with an agent and doing all those things that I love, you know, and figured like, oh, this is great. But mm -hmm. um, I didn't get drafted. So um, now let me ask you, so for those of us who were never going to be football stars, but I digress, there is, you know, you, you got, you get invited to the combine, you, you go through all of that thing. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that process is like? Well, you know, some of us do get, I didn't get invited to the combine, but I did get invited to private workouts. So okay. um, it's the same preparation, but with the combine, you get, you get more exposure. And back then it in those that date like it wasn't as prominent on tv they didn't have that many guys that were there so you usually right. just the first or second round it mm -hmm. wasn't like uh like how it is now where you have yeah. a really really great opportunity and mm -hmm. there weren't as many free agent signings so if you didn't get drafted it was wow. pretty hard to get in. you know it's so interesting um, to hear you say that about that that time then versus what it's like now because now you know the combine is like the summer olympics they have more people watching the combine than you know anything else me included yeah now because i need to see so i i can hear the audience asking the same question what what did you run the 40 in? Oh man. So I ran a four four. Um and I ran wow. a four five. Mm -hmm. So um before the draft, uh I was in the top 25 corners preseason that year. Okay. Um we didn't have a good year at Pitt that year. And Darn. Um, no. I know, right? The year before we did, we had a great year. Whatever. We didn't have a good year that year, and then um, I was like kind of slated in the third round mm -hmm. to go there. So I had like, I was on the board for like St. Louis, San Diego. I think it was Baltimore. I had some, some kind of layers that came back. St. Louis, I think yeah. I said that, but yeah. So they yeah. had just came off um, the championship where they were going. So that would have been nice mm -hmm. to be there and Dallas, I think. So I was on some, some agents, my, my agent was telling me I was on some board. So mm -hmm. I, you know what, to be honest, I'll just make this quick. I, Knew I was going to get drafted. I knew I wasn't going to get drafted because mm -hmm. I had a dream. We had a party. I was okay. getting ready for draft day. And 
my family and I had a dream that night that I was going to get drafted and it just went kaploop all black. Wow. Like, nightmare kind of like I knew I was like oh my gosh why well, I didn't tell anybody but mm -hmm. I kind of I told my mom afterwards the days sure. that I didn't get drafted I was like I feel like I'm not going to get drafted oh, and, I didn't, and I didn't so mm -hmm. you know that was me saying maybe forward to that guy that had something for me but I really remember that big I mean mm -hmm. I was at my brother's house and I woke up like no way like this is not no god no way yeah. and that's how it was for me it, it's very nerve-wracking it's like mm -hmm. you know so, you feel like it's in the hands of others and like what are you going to do afterwards i mean i ended up playing yeah. some pro, a little bit of like semi-pro ball afterwards and being mm -hmm. on some like that so mm -hmm. i really have to stop at college but going through right. the process of the nfl was really nerve-wracking i can imagine you know because i'm one of those people i watch three days of the draft yes all three days i i'm all for it popcorn hot wings the whole night I watched three days of the draft. And so you see these 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 kids, because in essence, that's what they are. You know, they're 21, 22, some maybe 23. And, and they're there sitting, whether they're, you know, at the stadium or at their home. And they're, you wonder what's going through your mind. How are you uh, feeling? Yeah, what, you're, can you, you tell us about you that? Don't, you, you have, you know... The anticipation, um, every time the phone's ringing, let me just say that, you, mm. you know, you, everyone could probably relate to waiting for a job opportunity. Yeah. They're, 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 um, the, the phone call that they've been waiting for. And now it's emails, right? Cause there were barely emails yeah. back then, <laughs> but that's what it was. Every time the phone rang, it's like, oh my gosh, is this it? Is it? I mean, and that's throughout the whole entire two to three days. That's what's going on. You're waiting. When the agent doesn't call and you don't get taken off the board, what happens then? What happens right there? Is there a call later that you have to have a meeting with your agent? What ha What's that process like? We just look at all options from that point, right? Mm -hmm. It's can we get on a team? You know, can we, you know, get on as a free agent somewhere? Is anybody interested in having you come on? If that is not the process which you have to wait for, for a while, then it's, can we go into the Canadian league? And then that's kind of all over again, sending tapes out, combines, arena league, whatever the semi-pro going to Europe. Cause back then they had NFL Europe. Sure. So it's trying that was like a minor league as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like, you don't give up on the dream right then and there. Mm -hmm. Some people do, but most of us, we don't. We're right. like, okay, let me have a couple more years to try to see what I can do mm -hmm. to, if they skipped me, if they didn't, and we've heard about those kind of stories, right, that someone has. So you always think you're that guy. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to be able to get past the odds and bam, right. I'm going to be yeah. the one that's going to be able to give that story that, hey, mm -hmm. I persevered, didn't get drafted. I, mm -hmm. You know, and you go out there and try to work harder. Yeah. I, I think that's how I took it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't speak for everyone else. That's how I did. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? I'm just, I mean, I've been fighting for it. And yeah. I'm going to do it for a little while longer. So how long did you fight for that dream of being in the NFL? Maybe like five or six years. That's a so long I time you're thinking enough. about it. I, well, I actually got to play Arena League. Okay. And I got to play Arena League. I got to play in the TET, like the TNT League. We had XFL, you know, right. back then. So I was blessed enough to, you know what? I went to some tryouts. I knew some people that were playing already. I knew this player is one of my good friends when I transferred yeah. and uh, from a, the other school. And I was able to get to a tryout and I went to a bunch of them. And mm -hmm. that is when I got faster, a little bit more faster, stronger. Yeah. So I was like, and I stressed a lot more. That's what I mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. And it made me faster. And so I actually ran like a couple of four, like really low four fours. And I'm six two, six three. So they're, I mean, you know, it's pro yeah. I mean, you look at the corner and DV, you need that. And yeah. um that game is super fast. <laughs> you better be able to cover. I can and imagine. So I played it. Wow. I played it. I played for LA. Okay. Uh, so I stayed home, played for the Avengers and Staples Center. And okay. then I got um, traded to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I played there for about a season or two. And then I kind of came back to LA for like a year. And I kind of was kind of, and I had a son in between that time that I was taking mm -hmm. care of. Like he was with sure. me. Yeah. And I just got to the point where I was like, you know what, it's time for me to, you know, move on. I will say this. You asked, what do people think? Well, you can't, you couldn't back then work on scholarship. You couldn't do anything. Mm. 
So your skills, when it came to, you're behind, the, you know, the eight ball a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm 27, never worked before. Mm -hmm. And so that's the hard thing you got to think of is like, okay, what am I going to do? And I didn't have a yeah. degree. You know, right. That's true. Degree, but yeah. I was, like that's only crazy. Like a, I was not that far away from mine. I should have finished, but mm -hmm. you know, I was mm -hmm. like, no, 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 I'm going to concentrate on the draft. And then I'll come back once I got this money. Well, that is right. <laughs> That is a huge statement and, and it takes an interesting balancing act because anybody who does anything, especially now in this new year, people are starting their businesses. People are like going back to school this year. I'm going to whatever. And they are putting literally everything that they have into that dream, that goal. So how is it? Can you say that? And then, you know, go all in, but have a backup plan. You know, how did you make that transition? going from your dream to oh well, I guess I need to do something else you know, you know what I'm gonna go off because faith for me mm -hmm. is understand that sometimes you go through the hardest pain for what God has planned for your life so and then. when you are doing something so much that you're for me it was like I thought football was everything to me now I'm not saying he took that away right okay. But what mm -hmm. I am saying is that where would I be if I did get that? Now, mm -hmm. I could have been prepared for it. I could have gotten prepared during the time. I don't know the way my character was. I, I don't <laughs> think so. But um, I'm talking about as far as like, hey, man, I was ready to go. But mm -hmm. the reason why I say that is because you have to have faith that if this didn't work out, then the, the door that is coming that you can't see. Mm -hmm. it's for your benefit yeah this is something that when the word of god says count it all joy when you go through the dire straits of fiery trials or anything like that it's mm -hmm. the inside that we're fixing not the outside right. Right? yeah so that is a monetary thing your mm -hmm. dream is a monetary thing yeah what god does is he puts you in your purpose and when he puts you in your purpose the unseen thing that you didn't know that God had planned for your life. Right. And your blessings are along that path. Your gift needs to take over. So that's an interesting segue because after that was over and your gifts and, and your talent led you this far, what then became your new purpose? And think about this way, being a quarterback, going to these different colleges, experiencing what I did, it really taught me, um, to be really socially forward, right? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is I met so many different people in this world from Iowa, mm -hmm. from Florida, different walks of life. I mean, mm -hmm. when you go to college or university, especially in the football team, you know, these are not the friends I grew up with. There's people coming okay. from other different places. Mm -hmm. And so moving forward, I never didn't think it worked out for me because it taught me discipline, championship mm -hmm. mentality, um, adversity, um those different things like that so I just put a lot of extra because I want the millions of dollars and fame that <laughs> went along with it yeah. right mm -hmm. um to where I did take those things and transition those into what I want to do now and, yeah. and what I was eventually going to do in the future from yeah. that point in time. yeah so, so you have to that, look at it that way right you know you mentioned earlier on that you know, when you got out of school, whatever, you never worked before. So what was your first job outside of all of the things that you were doing? What what did you do? You first? know what? Uh, okay. So I did a little like minor jobs and stuff, but sure. um, I went to this company and they wanted me to do like collections and sell, you know, collections. And I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, you know, cause I hated phones or whatever, all Right. but I get on there and um, uh, I was able to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And so it was a, fee a lady, she was our, our boss. And she was like, man, you're collecting a lot more money than everybody else. Like mm -hmm. instantly she's like, what are you doing? And I just really was really soft with people. A lot of people hang up on me and stuff like that. And I'm not yeah. saying that, but I just, I don't know. I just conversated with people. That was just my thing. And so um, I started there and 
I didn't think I was going to be in sales or anything like that because, you know, mm -hmm. knocking on the doors and doing that stuff and like kind of those things, I was like, oh my gosh, I do not <laughs> or the kind of used car salesman. I'm sorry if anybody's doing that. I'm not saying <laughs> that, but that is just the mantra that everybody sells. Right. Sales, right. And, uh, and so this is more B2B, like business mm -hmm. to business opened up like a door. And, and, and so I started there and mm -hmm. I began to grow. And she made me like really quickly, like her account executive. And she's like, oh, hey, wow. I, she taught me. And then you know what I did? I ended up going to see Zig Ziglar. She took me mm -hmm. there. And okay. we all went. And I was really, I'm really, I was really good with my words, like persuading, I guess mm -hmm. you want to say, kind of. But then he was like, there's no need to do that. Just have integrity and tell people what is wow. really going on. That has been a factor in my life all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot of stuff. So when he said that, I was like, oh, I can do that. Right. So instead of like, sometimes I just started going, okay, how much is it? I tell them mm -hmm. the value to you. I tell you. And so that mm -hmm. was, I started there doing something that I told myself I would never do. Right. Isn't that something? But it served you well because you end up working with another franchise. Who did you end up with? So from there, um, you know what? My, I'll tell you this. My brother passed mm -hmm. in 2006 and it was like, the hardest thing I ever had to go through. I've oh, gone sure. through a lot of um, deaths. You know what? This mm -hmm. is a fact here. I've been a pallbearer like nine times. Wow. A lot. A, a lot wow. dealing with my dad and some elders and then my cousins mm -hmm. and different things like that. But my brother Garrett's was very hard. Not that, you know, it is an sure. honor to take someone there, you know. Mm hmm and um because my dad sent a bunch of funerals and sometimes he just volunteered this sometimes so mm -hmm. um oh. but my with my brother we were all about you know making a better living different things like that trying mm -hmm. to grow these mm -hmm. titles and stuff but i left that place when he passed it just didn't matter to me anymore mm -hmm. so i wanted to get back in sports and uh I went in 24 hour fitness kind of, they found me mm -hmm. and they were like, Hey, we want you to be like a club manager. We're trying out this new outside of the box hiring system. And mm -hmm. you're kind of being guinea pig. <laughs> and <laughs> I went there and learned it and mm -hmm. really got taught how to run a business, how to, right. to really love my sports background. That is mm -hmm. what's big about DNA sports is because a lot of people see the discipline the things like that. So I put that on my resume. I always yeah, do. And yeah. that is the number one thing everyone talks about when they see my stuff. It's That's you went to the Browns, you won a national championship, you went to Pitt, you played division one football. Like that takes this, this, and that. And it does. So <laughs> yeah. you know, they see that's that. Awesome. And yeah. So that's how that's how I got there. Mm -hmm. And um, I was there for about seven years and I mean broke so many records there. Sure. Um, and it did teach well. And here's another part of my football balances being mm -hmm. a leader there as a club manager. I mm -hmm. they would have to go around and fix clubs and get them the bonus, and then we'll I'll leave eventually. And then right. there we go there. So um wow. that's where that quarterbacking helped. So mm -hmm. ship, and then I was able wow. to use that as I grew in my business ventures. Yeah, that's awesome. So you've done so many things. What's next for you, Trey? Yeah, you know what? I'll mention this Charger thing here. I went from 24-hour fitness to the Chargers. Yep. And oh, wow. that was, it coincides with what I have next because I, um, that was very significant. So now you can see mm -hmm. 25 years later, I wow. didn't get to the NFL as a player, mm -hmm. but I got there in business. And that's where I say with God, you mm -hmm. don't know. Maybe he saved my body. Maybe he saved me from injury. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But coming from 24 Hour Fitness, I've talked to my kids. I have two boys. And I said, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to do something that I love. Are you guys mm -hmm. with me? Because I'm going to take a $90,000 pay cut. Woo! They, yeah. <laughs> and I said, I'm just going to get in. I'm just going to try to get in. Mm -hmm. And let me see what happens and grows from there. And yeah. oh, man, praise God, like, put me in a great situation. And I got to do something even more, I mean, something that I couldn't even fathom. I sure. was with the players. I was in there. I mean, I know all the owners and yeah. everything was really great. They treated me well. I did well for them. We sold the brand new stadium. Yeah. And I had the IP experience in with them there. So I'll just say that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was just saying that 
San Diego or San Diego at the time and then now LA mm -hmm. was my brother's favorite team. Yeah. Now I'm working for them. Uh now I am a part of their family because I I mean I wasn't just, you know, I was sure. ticket sales and then I just worked my way up and all the hard mm -hmm. work. Six months later, they hey, we, you know, I went in a bow tie <laughs> every single day. You know, mm -hmm. dress dress, right? Right. So uh, but that was my signature thing was a bow mm -hmm. tie and I'm all, you know, I'm always tailored up. So that's true. <laughs> and uh and so that was what was good for me. And I enjoyed it. It was, mm. I, I felt like I made it. I was like, I yeah. made it. Mm -hmm. I'm here for life. Well, wow. I got sick. Life showed up. <laughs> it sure did. I had got a rare disease that mm. almost killed me. Gave me 15 days to live. Um, wow. That's when me and you kind of met. Yeah. Uh, I've been going through that and um, it changed my life. And yeah. um I still am recovering from it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got sepsis and um, man, that was the most painful thing that yeah. I can go through. And like you said, you know, like, it, I got but it's, so, it's so interesting, Troy, because despite all of that, like you said, when we met, you were still kind of going through that and, and dealing with that. But I can honestly say that since the day we met, you have still been the most upbeat, the most positive, the most um, look, forward looking, you know, because you finished your degree during that time. I did. You I did. did. I, my yeah. gosh. Um, you know, I had some really rough days, you know, <laughs> and I, I still do, but yeah. I get up, you know, and um, when it, it took a whole year to kind of recover, recover, like yeah. I had a, what we call a wound back, and that is something mm -hmm. that is just unreal. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need like I look it up. <laughs> That's yeah, all. I'm it's saying. a thing. It is yeah. just it's brutal. Yeah. And um, as soon as I got past me losing sixty pounds and being really skinny and all that right. stuff, I decided about. So actually, the uh, podcast. So my podcast mm -hmm. is called Triumph for Trey. Mm -hmm. And my friend at the Chargers at the time, or one of my friends while I was working, he's like, "Hey man, you do this podcast about." Kind of like what you've gone through, like what we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does it do? Does it depress you or anything like that? Or she knew what I was going through. And I was like, man, I, I just, dude, I'm working right now. I don't have time for that kind of, <laughs> I'll get to it. Right. When I was laying in the hospital because it was COVID and I was alone and no one could come in there. I was looking out the window and I was like, you know what, God? I'll do it. Mm. I'll do it. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I love what the charges have done for me. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get on this podcast. I'm going to talk about mental health. Well, how um, you can triumph over the trauma that's in your life. All mm -hmm. of them. Okay. And so that's why I started trying to work on the podcast. Well, yeah. I wanted to go back to school. Cause I was like, I'm not going to be on this podcast without my degree. I'm gonna be talking <laughs> to anybody, like, and I'm giving advice. Right. You know, I, I better have my degree hanging behind me. So funny. And, <laughs> I, I call Pitt and I'm like, Hey, I got two more classes. I was like, I got two more classes. And when I go there, they were like, you know what? I, we're really sorry. Your degree has been canceled. Wow. And I'm like, what? So they were like, you have to change your degree. So you have to take 10 classes. And I, so I was really honest with the, with the, my counselor. Like she was very young. She's like, I'm like, she goes, what do you want to do? I told her the truth about my podcast and stuff. She's sure. like, why don't you think about law? And I'm like, yeah. and and I remember I said, okay. <laughs> and then I, I did it and I, I had to take 10 classes in a year and fell in love with it. Yeah. And I remember because we I were talking ended back up getting and forth. right. And yeah, I get it up studying while I'm on my kind of like deathbed yeah. a little bit, <laughs> doing those things. But it was the best thing for me. Yeah. And um during that time, so so now it, with my future endeavors is mm -hmm. I am I've created Triumph for Trey. Mm -hmm. Um and and uh I've also created uh Turn Up Wealthy, right? And that means mm -hmm. um that is actually my business name. It's yeah. called Turn Up Wealthy and um, that means going from racks to riches and yeah. uh, it's, it's supposed to be turned up, but you know, right. uh, I, I got it. it a little bit more hip. Right. And, <laughs> um, and that, and that, what I'm doing with there is I'm, I'm wanting to help others and show them that you don't have to have 
just yeah. this great interest that you fall into. Finances mm -hmm. are choices, right? Just like yeah, your that's if you so good. Depressed, if you want to do this, you want to do that. My choices were bad. And mm -hmm. so I can tell them, hey, this is how where I was. But when I mm -hmm. sat down, I understood my finances. Plus, there's a lot of things that the government doesn't really sure. tell be able to be Well, yeah. And that they don't teach you in school and the whole thing. Troy, cool. there is so much left to talk about here, but we can't get it all done today. Okay. Okay. Look, everybody, don't worry. If you want to hear the, the rest of Trey's story, all of his contact information is going to be in the description below. Make sure you follow him on Instagram because some of his pictures are absolutely amazing. But while you're here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as share this with your friend. And if you or someone you know has an inspiring story, a topic we absolutely have to talk about, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at Faith on friday.com and click on contact and send me an email i really want to hear from you trey my friend before i let you go we got to play our game all right let's do it let's do it the game is called this or that and it's pretty simple i'm going to give you the choice of two things and you off the top of your head just tell me which one you like the best are you okay. ready to play let's do it all right here we go McDonald's or Burger King? I'm going with Burger King, Whopper. Hmm. Oh, okay. Batman or Captain America? Hi, ah, we, oh, Captain America. Oh, freaking Marvel fans. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm big time. Okay. See, and I'm not. I'm a DC fan, but moving on. Going to the movies or movies at home? Movies at home. Okay. Make the call or send the text? Ah. Uh... Uh, you know what? Sales, I'm making the call. Oh, yeah. That's your background. That makes sense. Yeah. Snickers or Three Musketeers? Snickers. Mm. This one Thanks I think now. I'm going to know. Dressing up or dressing down? Dressing up. Yeah, I knew that about you. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all would too. Check him out on Instagram. It's true. <laughs> Cats or dogs? Dogs. Ah. Thanksgiving or New Year's Eve? Thanksgiving, because, yeah, the food. It's all about the food. That's true. Yep. Fry it or grill it? Oh, fry it. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that about yes. you. Yes. <laughs> I'll barbecue all that. <laughs> That's it. Morning person or night owl? Man. You know what? I'm going to go with night owl because that's where all my movies and all my shows and everything like that. Yeah, I'm gonna go that's with. true. Okay. And finally, what's your favorite Olympic sport? You're going to... Oh, man. Can, can I get a 1A in there? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to go with track. Mm hmm And fencing. Fencing? I love fencing. I thought my curling was different. <laughs> they, they, uh, and then they, and then they scream. Oh, just start watching that. Where are we at? You know, when we get there, be Paris. I'm telling you. I do like fencing. all the other ones, track and field, all those ones, but. I'm telling you, if you want to be a sleeper, fencing is amazing. Oh, I watch it every time. Oh, my gosh. All right. Y'all heard it here first. Trey, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. I appreciate you. Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, prayers. Love everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you all, thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget, on Faith on Friday Presents.